In this part, I will talk about the music of creation. To understand the basics of this, I will invite you to go to this website, pateo.nl, and click on this presentation. It's in fact a series of presentations called The Holy Science. I think that's good to have as a basis to understand what I'm going to explain next. It starts with Plato. Plato lived about 2400 years ago on this planet in what we now call Greece. And most, his most famous legacy is the allegory of the caves, where he explains to me about three levels of our reality. You could say three worlds, or worlds within worlds. This is world number one. It starts with the source, that's the level of Do. Then we arrive at the level of La. Uh, sorry, at the level of uh, 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 the stars, Si. Level of Si. And this is the level of La, level of three. Level three, we, it seems to be real to us, but it's in fact our shadow reality. The shadow that creates of matter. All matter is just a shadow of energy, but we can't see the energy, we can only see the shadows of it. The notes in the sinus waves of energies. And it originates from the source, where we find the code of everything. The code has meaning. The energies create motion, because energies can never stand still. Pantarei, Heraclitus said in ancient Greece. Everything is always flowing, everything is always moving, moving around. And that creates the manifestation. So this is another way to represent that. It starts with the source. The source is the wholeness, the oneness, the Do. Then we arrive at the level of the energies, the flow of energies. It starts with the C, that's the level of C. And here we find the trinity, the trinity of the level of La, the shadow worlds of the matter. Energies are always moving. This is in fact the shadow of energy we can see. And the wavelength represents the speed of movement, while the ap amplitude explains, uh, shows the amount of energy that is moving. So this is the amount of energy, this is the speed of energy. This is what we call time, and this is what we call space. When we have space in two dimensions, then time looks like a circle. When we look at our orbit of our planet around the Sun Helios, it looks like a circle. So time looks like a circle in two dimensions. Every circle is in fact a three-dimensional spiral, when we take the third dimension into account. That's what we see here. Even our movement of our own planet is not circle around, but it's going up and up, or in a certain direction. Now let us look at the dynamics of energies. Here we see a slow energy. In the time it takes to take one full sine wave, this faster energy makes exactly two. So this is a ratio of one to two. Here we put them into one line, and we see three shared zero points, or null points. And those null points are in fact matter, we can say. Those are the shadows created by these energies. This is a harmonic relation, because this, these zero points, they will share uh, until infinity. They're always at the same pace, so to say. And this is called the octave, the harmonic relation of the octave. This is another one. This is 2, and this one is 3. This is a harmonic relation of 2 versus 3. Here we see that they also have three zero points, in the middle and the beginning at the end. Exactly the same as the previous one. And this is called a quint. And the third harmonic relation is called a quart, and that's this one. Now we see 3 and then 4. Again, zero points at the beginning, in the middle and the end. This is the quart. These are the three basic harmonic relations. And here we see a beautiful way to represent it. If you go on bowling, then you see <laughs> also this shape. The first one, 1 to 2, that's the octave. Then we see from 2 to 3, it's the quint. And then from 3 to 4, we find the quart. And in total, this is of course 10. It's all represented in this very ancient and very beautiful holy symbol. Some people call it the Enneagram but I call it the octave of creation, because this symbol shows in fact the whole creation, if you understand it, if you are able to read it. The process of creation starts with Do, then to Si, then to La, then to Sol, then to Fa, then to Mi, and then to Re. And then it goes to a new, lower level of Do. And the process of ascension is just the other way around. It goes from Re to Mi, to Fa, to Sol, to La, to Si, and then you're back at the top again. 
Now let us look at the tones, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Si, and to the Do. We find a relation between this Do and this Do. That's the relation of an octave, because this Do vibrates twice as fast as that Do. Within the harmonic relation of a Do, we find four quints. Those are the upper bows. That's the relation of two versus three. And we also find four quarts. Those are the relations under it. Relations from three to four are to two square. So within the whole of eight, because octave means whole of eight, we find also eight harmonic relations, four quints and four quarts. And we find eight, eight tones, eight holy tones. Now let us look at the jumps. The jump from Do to Re is a big one, and the jump from Re to also a big one. Those jumps are so big that there is room for a semitone. And that's what we see here. This black key represents the semitone that can be put between the Do and the Re, and also between the Re and the Mi. We find the semitone, the black key. But the black key is lacking between the Mi and the Fa, because this jump is a really small one. It's more than twice smaller. So because it's so small, there is not enough space for a semitone. That's why the black key is lacking here. And the same here between the C and the Do. There's also not enough space because these are three big jumps and this is a really small one again. So that's why it's lacking here again. And that's why we see in the Enneagram the two intervals or the two shocks. Other videos I explain more about them, but that's very important. Now let us look at the harmonic relations. When we draw lines in this shim, when we draw the, the bows here into straight lines, then we get this beautiful symbol. And again we see the harmonic of everything. Only the relation between C and Fa is lacking, otherwise it would be perfect. Because there are two relations, the relation from Do to Sol is harmonic, but also the relation from Sol to Do is harmonic again, the other way around. That's what we see here, from Do to Sol is a quint, and from sol to do is a quart. That's what we see here. This can also be represented as the cross, the crucifix.